All right, this is my second French defense challenge with one of my dearest subscribers, who by the way is not a typical French defense player. So I asked him to play the French defense for the purpose of learning. So I wanna play the tennis on. Oh, there we see a different move order. So point to D6. Now it doesn't make sense for me to play the tennis on gambit line. Cause I thought my opponent was going to play pawn to D5 after which I was going to play pawn to D3 and then knight G5. So it's time to play something else like pawn to D4, just taking the whole center since my opponent refused to dominate the center. So knight to F6, knight to F6. So now this is just a normal game of chess where the best tactician has to win at the end of the day. And now, as you can see, this doesn't look like the typical French defense. This is just another opening where we are playing normal moves. You see what I'm doing is just developing minor pieces. And so is my opponent. You can see how solid my opponent is, maybe trying to cast a shot. You know what? There is a move that I play against this pawn structure, pawn to g4. Because after all, I know that black wants to cast a shot. So maybe by playing pawn to g4, I'm going to open up the g file for my king's rook someday. So pawn to g4. Why sacrificing the g pawn? By the way, I just noticed that black moved his dark squared bishop. And so by moving his dark squared bishop, he left the g7 pawn hanging. So these are the tactics that I was talking about. And you can also employ this same tactic against the semi slav. The idea is that if Knight takes g4, I'm going to play rook g1. And there we see my opponent just commented, by the way, to say, I've never seen this move before. He doesn't know the idea behind pawn to g4. And I do understand this is out of his league. He's an e4, e5 player. But hey, at the end of the day, as a chess player, you need to know at least more than 20 openings if you want to improve. So the simple idea behind pawn to g4 is that if knight takes g4, I can just play rook g1 attacking the knight. And after the knight goes back, I go ahead and take the free pawn on g7, rather taking back my pawn. And in case of pawn to h5, trying to defend the knight, I still have pawn to h3. By the way, the best that black can do here is just to take the pawn and retreat his knight back to f6, or probably just go pawn to h6. But let's see what my opponent is going to do anyway. Okay, so there we see knight takes g4 finally. By the way, I just increased the time for my opponent and he just did the same. So rook g1. So once again, the goal is just to stop black from castling short. I'm going to take the g7 pawn. So not much of a stretch. If pawn to h5, I have pawn to h3. I guess black has to retreat the knight. Yep, knight f6. So rook takes g7. And there we see rook g8 by black. I guess I should just exchange rooks. I'll probably go bishop h6 so that if rook takes, I take back with my bishop. Nah, let me just take the rook. I expect knight takes g8. Yep, there was nothing else. <laughs> so what else can I do here? Maybe point to e5. Yeah, point to e5, just, you know, expanding on the center. I don't know what else to do. Besides, I still have to develop my minor pieces, the two bishops, maybe beginning with the dark squad bishop, putting it on f4, bishop f4, next queen d2, then castle long. There we see knight c6. So queen d2, I'm just preparing to castle long. Okay, point to b6. I hate that move, but maybe because of the knight on c6, let me go bishop b5, pinning that knight. Yeah, I know bishop b7 is coming, but I have a4, a5, so bishop b7, a4, I just want to play a5, given a chance. There we see a6, let me just take the knight and simplify the game, what else? So bishop takes, bishop takes, yep, that was check. And let me go queen d3, attacking the h7 pawn. So you can see how I am making strategies. These are my own strategies. The memorizing phase ended a long time ago. And so we are on our own. This is where the best planner has to win at the end of the day. So if you were to open my mind, the only things that I'm thinking about are positional sacrifices, clearance sacrifices, and simple tactics to do with squares. These are the things that strong players think about in the middle game. 
which one of my pieces is not active which one of my opponent's pieces is the most active piece so that i get rid of it which one of my pieces is the least developed piece so that i can improve it do i have any pawn breaks you have to make a list of those things if you want to make your work easier if that sounds too complex for you just think of the SWOT analysis what are my strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats that's all anyway so black just played queen f8 after i played queen takes h7 and now since i can't take the pawn on f7 what's the way forward maybe bishop g5 in an effort to exchange bishops just simplifying the game nothing much if bishop takes i'm gonna place my knight on a better square so there we see pawn to f6 and boom just like that a new square on e5 has been created for my knight automatically so you can see what i was talking about you guys so let me just go knight e5 check i didn't know that i was going to have knight e5 at a later stage but i just played a move that forced my opponent to make a mistake and it happened so knight e5 check king d6 so even though my knight is attacking the light squad bishop my queen on h7 is under attack as well so i'm thinking maybe let me just retreat my queen back to h4 yep so queen h4 next i'm thinking of queen f4 or probably bishop f4 okay so there we see rook e8 and i've seen a chess puzzle before which had this similar position where you have to pin your own knight to your opponent's king which is restricted by your knight so that once you move your knight you're going to make a discovery check and probably end up winning a bigger piece in return or a pawn jays by the way i just saw a very good tactic once again this is what i talked about you guys i'm 100 percent sure that my opponent is not going to see this queen g3 is a killer move because i can see a checkmate on b4 after sacrificing my knight on b5 so i can see these things in my mind before playing them again this is what we mean by board vision chess puzzles and tactics will teach you how to visualize these stuff even without you realizing that you're learning something and if that doesn't happen i still have knight g6 discovery on the king and win the black queen so this is what i meant by pinning your own knight if black plays anything else i'm just gonna sacrifice my queen's knight so there we see knight h5 so i have knight b5 check and followed by queen a3 check and after pawn to b4 queen takes b4 checkmate <laughs> my opponent just commented to say wow this is a very beautiful move thank you so much and queen a3 check next queen takes b4 checkmate so these are the tactics that i was talking about you guys it all comes down to these simple things that most beginners intermediate level players and other average players don't see so these are the things that you learn when you start solving chess puzzles and tactics of course they are boring but puzzles just allow you to get familiar with certain positions like these so my opponent just played pawn to b4 and i need to take queen takes b4 checkmate well i don't have much to say i intended to play the tennis on gambit against the french defense but my opponent declined it by playing something else nevertheless i still showed you what to do if your game doesn't go as planned you just play chess develop your minor pieces in the opening stage put them on the most active squares and start improving them in the middle game to create your chances and whenever you are stuck in the middle game you don't know what to do think of the SWOT analysis think of your strengths your weaknesses opportunities and threats or to make your work easier just try to find where you can make positional sacrifices clearance sacrifices and other related imbalances to confuse your enemy right thank you so much for watching this video i hope you learned one or two things again don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you are new because that's how you encourage me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one the link to my patreon page is in the comment section down below you can also join me on patreon to gain access to any of my membership tiers where i post other detailed studies that i can't publish on youtube hope to see you soon in my next video until next time bye bye